welcome, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Vishal Mundra, and I'm going to be talking a little bit today about the uh, exploring the IP lifecycle. And uh, I'm a VP of Applications at Methodics, and so let's get started. So, um, as you know, um, everything has a life cycle. Uh, my eight year old tells me that butterflies have a life cycle. And I try to tell him that IP has a life cycle. Uh, it's a hard sell for an eight-year-old, but we do believe that IP does have a life cycle. And we have, in our, pro in our company, identified the IP life cycle as a four-stage uh, acquire, qualify, distribute, integrate life cycle that we'll just look at it a little more closely in this presentation. So the product that we have called Project IC from Methodics uh, is a uh, is architected around the IP lifecycle. Uh, it manages the IP lifecycle within your environment or within your enterprise, and it's built to understand IP at the atomic level. And by that we mean it's built to understand IP as a unit and manages IP for you. Uh, it integrates into your existing infrastructure so you don't have to uproot all of your design processes, design flows. You can introduce Project IC directly where uh, you, you have your uh, flow in place today. So, and it provides a lot of visibility into your current design status. So it's more than just looking at IP or uh, managing IP, but we can do a lot more with it and provide you a lot of visibility about what's going on with the IP in your uh, environment. So let's explore uh, the IP lifecycle with Project IC. So the first thing, the first stage of the IP lifecycle in our uh, in our flow is the acquisition stage, and acquisition is, you know, analogous to the birth of an IP, if you will, and we believe that data is a DNA of the IP. Obviously, you know, it all begins with selecting the right data management tool. So you have IP begins, you know, you have a bunch of files, design files, and all of that, but you have to store it in a place. You have to store it in, in some tool like Perforce, Subversion, or Git. And we let you, you know, you, you can choose whichever data management tool you want to use. And uh, Project IC's uh, IP management solution will sit on top of that. Uh, but IP is more than just the, 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 the files that go into the design. IP is all about, uh, you know, uh, several other things, including labels, properties, workspaces, permissions, and all the other things that go along with this DNA. It's, if we will, a cloud of metadata that surrounds this DNA of IP. And we, uh, at Project IC, has a way of abstracting all of that information into a single IP object and moving that IP object around your, your, your enterprise. So after you start with all the design files, you need to have a bunch of metadata. But you also need to make sure that this IP blends into the environment that it is used in in order for it to survive. And what does that mean? That means that the kind of environments that people are using IP in are different. The analog designers might need an IP to work out of Virtuoso, for example. The digital designers work in their command line clients, and they want, they want to have the, the entire solution be available to them at the command line. And there are uh, uh, integrators who might want a nice web-based dashboard. So there are various different kinds of environment that IP is used in within your, within your enterprise. And uh, as part of Project IC, we have clients that address all of these different environments. These uh, clients are also customizable and extensible, so you can use the ones that, we, that come out of the box with the, ch with the product, or you can build your own based on our APIs. Once we have acquired an IP or you know, started building an IP in the system, we go into what we call the awkward growing phase. This means that an IP uh, you know, starts maturing over time. You add more features, you add more, uh, uh, you fix bugs, you, you do various things with the IP, and it's always adapting. It's never static. It's, it, it has versions, branches, derivatives, and proven configurations and various parameters that need to go with it. If you're building a piece of IP that is going to be used across your entire company, you're not just going to design the file once. You're going to do a multiple revs of the design versions. Some people are going to branch off a particular version because they want that, and they're going to have other versions. And so there's a whole bunch of activity that surrounds an IP during this growing phase. And we have, uh, product, as part of a product, we address most of these issues as well. In addition to the IP growing in, in its environment, we also have the concept of releases, which al allows you to select versions of this IP that are fit to survive. And what do I mean by that? What this means is that 
as you're checking in new versions of your IP, you know, you're, you're fixing bugs, you're adding features, you're doing all the stuff that you need to do in order to make the IP really uh, useful, not all of those check-ins, not all of those uh, additions to the IP are actually going to be, uh, you know, usable by others. So you want to take well-known, logically defined uh, snapshots or, uh, you know, interesting points in your IP development, and only those are really shareable by other people within your company. So we have a release management system that qualifies your IP and allows only the good versions of the IP to go out to the rest of the world while you continue your development. So that's the, that's the selection through release management. And we have many ways of doing these releases. The simplest way of doing a release for an IP is to simply, you know, uh, call a, a couple of hooks or call hook scripts that you have designed to verify the quality of an IP. But we also have other methodologies like a Jenkins plugin. If plugin. And if you've heard of Jenkins, it's a way of software engineers to, to build releases and do qualification. So we have a Jenkins plugin that allows you to use Jenkins as part of your release management tool. We also have a fully scalable, built from ground up release server that's really effective for design teams and hardware teams to, to interact together and build these releases that can then go out to the rest of the uh, rest of the world. So as a, as a concept, you know, qualification as the IP is growing into, coming into its own, uh, some versions of this IP can now be shared and they are guaranteed to have a certain level of quality, which means they are the ones that are qualified to survive in the jungle that's out there. Once you have your IP come to a certain level of maturity, you're now going to start distributing this IP. Essentially what this means is that you want to have other people within the company discover the state of this IP. So that uh, IP discovery is enabled in our product through a dynamic catalog. And what I mean by that is that this is not just a static spreadsheet that, that is owned by somebody. This is a dynamic catalog that tracks the current stage of the development of the IP, the releases of the various pieces of IP, the hierarchies that the IP is available in, and anytime anybody does a new release of an IP, the catalog is automatically updated with that particular version. So as a user, if you're looking, for example, a CPU internally, or you're building a USB controller or whatever you want to use, you could go in and select all the available USB controllers within your company. And you could go and click on one of those and you'll see all the versions that are available. And these versions, as I mentioned previously, have been qualified using some release flow that you've put together. Either the release flow that comes with the tool or something that you've designed on your own. But people can go in and go to the any level of detail on a particular IP and decide which version of that particular IP they want to use for their project. So. It's a Google-style search that we are very uh, proud of because it's, while it looks very simple, it's actually pretty hard to implement this. And it's based on customizable labels. So you decide what, how you're going to categorize your IP. I mean, is it going to be low power versus high power versus, you know, cust you know uh, is it soft IP, hard IP? You decide how your customization, how your labeling of the IP goes, and we implement that in our catalog as easily searchable tags. The next set of... Uh, challenges during the distribute phase is actually distributing the IP physically across the world. So as I mentioned, you've chosen some sort of a DM tool, you know, whether it's Subversion or Perforce or Git, any of the popular DM solutions out there in the market, if you pick one of those, you can actually distribute physically the files across the world because most of these solutions come with some sort of a distribution strategy. Perforce has a replication server, SVN or Subversion has, you know, companies that provide these replication servers for you. However, what they are doing is they're replicating files. They're replicating a bunch of data and metadata. And what Project IC provides is an IP-level abstraction on top of that. So what our distribution methodology is a smart cache that is built into every, work, uh, every site. If you have a global enterprise you know, with a design out in Asia and a part of the design being done in Europe and a part of the design being done in the US or whatever it is, then you need to make sure that as an engineer is building his workspace, all of these IPs that, is being, that he's using from across the world appear local to him. And by that, what we mean is that we'll, we build an IP cache on each site, and all the popularly used IPs are, are res resident in that cache, and we point off to the cache whenever we can. That makes all these IPs appear local. The physically distributing the, the files themselves are handled by the DM system of your choice, and then on top of that, our IP cache further you know, enhances the experience of building really quick workspaces. 
And the changes also need to be synchronized. So essentially, you're not just getting some random version of some IP or a file set that you don't know anything about. You get a specific version of every IP. And if that IP is not in the cache, it is brought in from the DM system and populated in the cache. And uh, we, we leverage global infrastructure. So essentially, you know, most of the DM tools out there in the world today have already solved very well the, the, the problem of distributing individual files across the world. We leverage that and give you a smart IP cache on top of it. OK. The last and final step of this IP lifecycle is the integration step. So it needs to be, an IP needs to build a home. Essentially, what we mean by that is if I have a project or an SOC, and I'm assembling that SOC with IP either developed within our company or bought from outside, we need to start pulling together all of these IPs and putting them into a bigger structure. You know, The USB controller goes, sits with a USB 5, which then is part of the high-speed I.O. cluster. So the tool inherently understands IP hierarchy. So when you pull in an IP cluster, or when you pull in a subsystem, all of the components and IPs that are part of that hierarchy are pulled into your system. So you never have to guess whether this version of the USB controller is going to work with this version of the USB Phi. What you get is essentially a combination that always works. Because somebody's tried it, somebody's already taped out that combination. And the, what you get is a, a pre-verified section of this. And Essentially, the central configuration option, uh, central configuration management, allows for each project to select the versions of the IPs and subsystems it's going to use, and everybody who's using workspaces or building workspaces from that central configuration always gets exactly the same IPs. So there's no guessing whether did this guy test something on a version that we don't know about because everybody's working off of the same versions. This workspace. This integration is really made it made easy by, by our workspace building uh, as part of the project IC, and you know hierarchy simplifies complex systems. So if you are pulling in high-speed I/O cluster where you know all the elements, you know whether it's SATA, USB, whatever it is, you know all of the components are already there, pre-verified, work together, and it simplifies the complexity of what you want to do. So you don't have to select individual pieces; you can select subsystems. And, and finally, the integrate step requires the IP to correct its errors and learn from its mistakes. And what we mean by that is it's not sufficient only to bring in the IP, but you also know, need to know what bugs you're bringing in. Because bugs are obviously an integral part of the IP. So when you bring in an IP into our system, or when you build an SOC with a bunch of IPs, it's not enough just to know, OK, I got version A of this IP. But what are the bugs that are associated with version A? And we have, a, we have an integration with all the standard uh, uh, Bug, bug tracking tools like Jira, Bugzilla, etc., and we can bring bugs in the context of your use. So, if you have, for example, if you can see the the screenshot over there, there's a CPU that has cache and logic and core, and the core happens to have more uh, a few bugs. Those bugs are visible in the context of the IP that you're being used. If you change the version of the core that you're using, you get the bugs that are associated with that version. And essentially, it starts all over again. Today's design is tomorrow's IP. By, by that, I mean that you start with a hierarchy of a few things, and then you build that into a subsystem. Then that subsystem lives on as an IP of its own and completes the life cycle by going back and saying, here's a new IP. You know, here's what we have created as a high-speed I.O. cluster, which used to be a bunch of smaller IPs, is now a bigger IP. So this is a system of taking a piece of IP, building a hierarchy, and then keeping the hierarchy together as a unit can then, which then can integrate into a bigger hierarchy, is a way of saying that we complete the life cycle and go back into acquisition of new IP. So everything that you need with, for an IP, build a workspace with it, bug tracking, you know, uh, configuration management, properties, labels, all the metadata that's associated with an IP comes as a package with the IP. So you're not scrambling around to figure out, let me go find the bugs from this database, or let me go figure out the usage from that database. So overall, the message that I want to leave the, the, the audience with today is that you know, the project I see is IP management strategies, IP management done right. And we believe in open data, open interfaces, and open architecture. We want to seamlessly integrate into your existing system so you don't have to uproot what you've already decided. Uh, and you can adopt it at any level. You can start with one IP. You can start with a subsystem. You can start at the whole enterprise level. It's up to you. It's extensible. It's agnostic to the DM system that you're using under, uh, under the covers. And uh, that's the Project IC tool. So thank you for listening to me. 
And uh, if you have any other questions or comments, please feel free to swap by our booth. It's right across the aisle from, uh, from here. And uh, I'm also available for questions and comments right after this talk. Thank you.